Nia Nia everyone, this is Thermite, and this is Until Your Bones Rot, Volume 2. So we have, um, fuck, this is where the, the problems come in. This is either Haruka or Tsubaki. Um, I do have that page. Okay, this is Haruka. That's right, Tsubaki was short black hair. Haruka is long, sort of strawberry blonde, I guess. I didn't really think about, like, I've always assumed that everyone in the series has very, like, natural colored hair, but I guess not. Yeah, because uh, Tsubaki has black hair. She has sort of a strawberry blonde. But, like, they're all Japanese, right? Anyways, holy crap. We're going to get through a lot of time. I really do love how short some of these chapters are, though. Wait a moment. Okay, let's do it. On second thought, let's not. <laughs> I've never been good at Twister. I hate that game so much. It's not that I, like, have a horrible dislike for it. It's just I'm incapable of, like, properly twisting Never going out with anyone but you, Shintaro. We already have kind of this vague sort of, like, harem thing going on with Shintaro. But it's probably not going to work out. Thanks, Ryu. Everything's ruined now. Yeah. Uh, last volume we had Akira be super rapey towards um, Tsubaki, right? What happened between you and Tsubaki on the trip? Was it? Was it Ryu? I thought it was Akira. Yeah, because I remember thinking, like, oh, Akira seems like the super perfect dude. But then again, I guess they could both be really jealous. He said, me too. Wow, that's pretty harsh, man. You okay with that? About Haruka. Okay, so he likes Haruka, not uh, Tsubaki. So I guess he might just... I don't know if it was if that's jealousy or if it literally is just, like... I don't know. Because that feels very strong for someone who isn't attracted to Tsubaki. Oh, shit. Oh no! Okay, so this is the body that they uh, disassembled and buried in five separate locations. Hmm. That fell apart faster than I was thinking. He called us fiends. And even that, like... Uh, see, I can kind of, like, I can buy why they feel so horrible about this. Because in the end, like, they didn't do it because they were ghoulish. They did it because they were blackmailed into it. And, like, we, we saw that entire, like, not even, like... I wouldn't say horrible as in, like, disgusting. I'd say horrible as just, in, like, we saw how it affected them when they were dismembering that body. That they weren't having fun with it. They weren't enjoying it. They were just, like, it was awful. It was actually awful. And even then, I wouldn't say that they're fiends. Like, they really did kill one person. But from everything we've seen so far, it seems like that was pretty well deserved. Like, from what we've seen so far, Akira feels like the most unstable out of the five of them. Like, Shintro has that face. But even that, I think, is just more like a trauma thing. And then Ryu is surprisingly like well composed. Like the one thing he did, it was drawn in a scary way earlier in this volume. But like when he confronted Chin, all he was all he wanted was to know the truth. And like he didn't flip out on him. He you know he just grabbed him. and was like, hey, listen, we don't tell secrets or we don't keep secrets from each other. So tell me the truth. So like I trust Ryu. Whereas like with Akira, we saw him be a complete piece of garbage. <sighs> okay. So we're getting, we're going to learn more about the investigation team, I guess. Like, the fact that they both seem kind of quirky is worrisome. Because it means that they're probably going to be important, which means this might be a, uh, a cat and dog chase soon enough. Also, they didn't recognize the corpse at all, so they probably don't have a connection to it at all, apart from just, you know, having shown up and then dismembered it and then, like, you know, split it up. Cat litter. Would someone so dis uh, discomposed things to cover the smell with cat litter? This is true. Like, they are following very, very good notes on how to disassemble that corpse. And I keep using the phrase disassemble because that's what the, the notes used. The whole disassembly thing. Oh, man. Like, of course that would make it so strange. This contrast between the fact that this was clearly done by someone who didn't want to do it. But then it's, like, the actual concept behind it is, like, expertly thought out. Oh, they would make their teachers proud. Exactly right on the money. And then, yep, this is kind of what we have to do. Although, like, again, this isn't, like, they aren't really murderers. They murdered someone, to, but that doesn't make them murderers. Like, it's not their profession. It's not something they're good at. They have killed exactly one person with, you know, the element of surprise. And ever since then, they've been, you know, just, like, it's kind of traumatized them. It's bonded them, but it's also been, like, you know, a horrible thing on their minds. And now they've had to disassemble a corpse. Clearly, it did not, like, help them. It, it didn't desensitize them to that. Like, they had to go through a bunch of other things, like covering the head to try and make it feel more okay for them to do. So there's no way these five can, like, track down a guy and kill him, right? Right. Like, Shintaro went right into it. Everyone else has been very quiet about it, but Shintaro just immediately jumped into, yep, we gotta kill him. 
Wait, what? Okay, this changes everything. Also, it does explain their uh, color. Because again, I was so surprised that Haruka's like hair was that strawberry blonde. And I didn't even think about the fact that her hair is also strawberry blonde. Oh, that's so clever, though. This is fantastic. Oh, wow. Um, my theory sir, uh, so far is that the collar is related to Shintaro. Like, it might be like Shintaro's uncle or something. If we're going to continue this concept of everyone being... Oh, wow, 39 gigs. I'll do that later. If we're continuing down that path of, like, it being relatively tight-knit, if it's not someone completely random, who I could not guess anyways, I want to think it's his uncle, because he did say, like, you know, the way he yelled felt a lot like his dad. Who cares? I'm young. Because you're young. Your common sense is the thing taking a day off, you son of a bitch. <laughs> ah, and because of this, we now have a mole. The danger is, though, like, um, Fuji feels like a fairly smart guy. So if the investigation, like, if the killers, if, like, if he starts to, you know, get a lead on them, and then they manage to get out of his attention very cleanly, like, if it seems as almost, if it seems like they have a mole, I think he would be able to quickly figure it out. That, okay. Or not even that, like, he would figure out who it was specifically, but he would, he seems like the kind of person who would absolutely tell her false information and then see if the killers, like, pick up on that false information and then go, okay, so it's clearly either you or, like, someone you know. Let's go to protect our peaceful lives. Akira is right. Like, even before this whole thing, like, even before this, you know, you know new killer thing started, it, like, they killed someone, and that has genuinely been haunting them. The series could have gone on without anything like this, and it still would have been probably a pretty powerful uh, character story. All the bones and your blood seals back. Huh, did they keep... Wait a minute, what? I just realized, they kept it down there with the body, right? That is so retarded. I thought one of them care like kept it with them, right? I thought. I thought one of them had to have brought it there so that they could, you know, like, like they each have one of the uh, the pieces of bone. But then I thought one of them would have had the seal. They couldn't have just kept it there, because then if someone found the body, wouldn't they just be like, oh, look at these fucking blood seals with five uh, kids' names on it. Yeah, hmm, this is really interesting. Like, the killer is not dragging this out for too long. But then what does he want? Like, there's no body here, but... He is right, though. Like, the killer most likely want, like, he saw that it's on the news, and he wants, like, cut all uh, communication. Possibly so that, like, the kids can't figure out who it is, therefore it can't go back to him. Like, if the kids get caught, then okay, fuck it. They're they're out to dry. What are they going to say? Like, oh, uh, we found someone else, you know. <laughs> like, oh, there was just a body. Some mysterious person gave us a body, and so we cut it up for some reason because they can't explain, you know, the killing. Or if they do explain it, then it's like, oh, aren't you just serial killers then? Uh, that is, okay, that is not what I expected. This contrast from, like, how fucking crazy he is to, like, the very calm uh, demands he can make. That is, uh, this is so unsettling. This time I took the pleasure of installing a hidden camera. Uh, this is so creepy. I'm, so for anyone who's not like watching these as they come out, I'm watching, I'm reading this along with basically all of Assassination Classroom. And this is giving me like, it, this isn't at all like Assassination Classroom, but the combination of like kids killing, uh, let's move this over a little. This combination of like, kids killing combined with like this sort of sensei like person on the phone who is not at all like the sensei in assassination, uh, assassination classroom don't get me wrong but like this guy has a very peculiar look towards like educating the kids and like you know giving them demands and whatnot it it's so weird because like the series are basically completely unrelated but there's this very weird parallel that is just enough to make me think about it but not enough for me to like to actually think there's a real connection there. It's just a really strange coincidence. How how does this person know about the shoulder injury? If you don't do it, Chintaro, I won't give back the bones. And again, like, the killer can do whatever he wants. He's promising this, but he's it's not like there's a contract or anything. He can just say, nah, fuck it, I don't give a shit. I'm keeping the bones, and also I have porn of you now. Or, you know, softcore porn. Your hands on your knees. Right. Ah. Uh... How incredibly gross. Okay, what are these instructions? Because again, there's no corpse here. Is is this person going to blackmail them into actually killing someone? Hmm. Next time's probably better. 
So all he did was basically just have them strip. Hmm. Am I messed up? Oh no, please don't kill the bunner. I can't believe how tense the scene is. It's literally a scene of two, like, not even high school kids petting a bunny. But I, I f I'm so scared for this bunny. I do agree with her, though. Like, it is wrong. It doesn't matter whether, like, it was justified. It can be, like, you can do something that is justified, but that doesn't make it right. Like, I've brought this up many times in other videos when it comes to, like, you know, uh, killing people or, like, acts of war or whatever. Just because something is justified or it's the, like, it is the most correct thing to do in a situation doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it morally okay. I think that there is this, like, you can still justify it to yourself. You can still say, okay, in this situation, this is the best thing I could have done. And I don't think that's wrong. I think, in fact, it's quite necessary for people who have done, like, horrible things you can't take back to eventually be able to justify it to themselves, to be able to find peace. However, I don't think that being able to make peace with something makes it objection, you know, like objectively correct or objectively right. Killing someone is always wrong. Like, there's always a part of killing someone that is wrong, even if it is like, you know, even if it is like no qualms, like no holds barred, no qualms, killing this person is the best thing for society or for the world or for like everyone involved, even for that person even. I think there's still like an immorality to murder or to killing someone. And so I can absolutely agree with her stance here. Like, yeah, even though they saved his life and even though they love him, they like all of you know, all of his friends love him. Even then, it doesn't change the fact that the fact that they killed his dad is like that was a sin. That was a bad thing to do. It is something they can, you know, at the end of the day, they can say, well, you know, I don't feel horrible about it. He deserved it. That doesn't mean it was an OK thing to do. Uh, and again, when I passed with Crosswalk, he turned and grinned. I know that this is like this could be just a parallel to what Shin felt here. Or, you know, when he was a little kid, he spilled the soy, the, you know, the soy sauce. And then, oh, crap, never mind. It was just, you know, it was just a memory. Or, you know, he didn't fully remember that. Oh, yeah, my dad's dead. It was like, a, you know, a sudden pan flash. It could be that. But also, if they're real, like. It's completely possible that it is actually like an evil uncle situation. I think that would be a sort of a cop out. I think it's much more interesting if it's not someone who looks like him at all. But at the same time, I wouldn't put it past, like, just a series in general to do something like that. And I think that would still be pretty effective in its own way. Are you going to murder someone because you like me? Don't you have any better reason than that? I mean, that's what it comes down to. Like, that is what he's asking her. Even if he was trying to, like, phrase it in a different way, in the end, like... Even if it wasn't love, it would still be like, well, why... You know, why do I want to kill this, you know, this person who was blackmailing us? In the end, it's either for ourselves or it's for each other. Like, there's no greater justification for it. You can't say like, oh, we're doing it to make the world a better place, to free the world of impurities. He didn't even realize that in the end, he wanted to love her. Oh no, it would never come to fruition. So, whatever happens, like specifically, it would never come to fruition. All he, all she said was, when we're done with this time, let's go on a date. So, like, it doesn't mean that they're, one of them is going to die or anything. It just means specifically, after this time, they cannot go on a date for whatever reason. That is quite worrying. Like, I'll have to lock that back in my mind. All I do is hurt the people around me. I guess that's an interesting way to put it. <sighs> Better tell my kids to stay away. Wait, what? So he made Shin cross-dress? That's not what I expected. You're not what, pray tell? Okay, so that's it. He was trying to force Shin to be basically like his substitute wife. Like, he was trying to make Shin act like a girl and then also kind of be a substitute wife. That's, uh... Okay, so this is how it happened. Because I was... Okay. Because I felt like this time, like, we saw this before. I was like, okay, this had to be the first time that the kids saw him beat the shit out of Shintaro, right? Because that, yeah, that was the whole, at this rate, Shintaro really will die. So I thought, like, it'd be really weird if they kept doing that over and over and over again. Like, if they saw him happen, do it multiple times, and eventually there was, like, a breaking point. But okay, so this was the one time. The one time where, like, they were all there, he brought Shintaro inside, started beating the shit out of him, and they were like, okay, we have to do something. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought they intervened as this was happening, but okay, never mind. So they saw it, they were like, you know, at this rate, yeah, he will die, but not, like, right now, just, like, in general. Like, if this keeps up, he's going to die eventually, so... Okay, okay. 
now I have everything straightened out in my mind. Akira apparently was the one who was, yeah, he was the most extreme even back then. Definitely keeping an eye on him now. Also, it's interesting that Haruka and Tsubaki both had the same idea of, like, no matter what, no matter what it is wrong to kill. Also, it's really cool that I just realized Haruka and Tsubaki's uh, hairstyle switched, uh, switched over. Like, Tsubaki now has short hair and Haruka has long hair, but it was the opposite before. Oh. Okay, that wasn't even part of the, um, the attack on the dad. It was specifically just the this. Because clearly, like, it was scarred, so she never had, like, proper treatment with it. Or, like, I know it can scar regardless of whether you have proper treatment, but I imagine, like, yeah, if they went to a nurse, it probably would have healed over a bit better. Okay, Shintaro and Tsubaki. Oh, no. Okay, so he's going to literally just have Shintaro and Tsubaki fuck. Well, that's going to be, uh, that's going to strain the relationship a bit. The other three. Uh, so they're probably going to find a body or something. Because we know for a fact that one room is like, you know, it has the uh, the cameras there. So they're probably he's probably going to force them to have sex. This I am much less knowledgeable about. I feel like he's he has to want to just like cover up the previous murder, right? It can't be just another murder. Oh, shit. OK, it is a corpse. Never mind. OK, so this is the first time we've really gotten to see this killer. This is so weird. It seems like they are just straight up a murderer, though, or like a serial killer. It is also really weird that, you know, the first time it was all five of them. Now he's trusted just two of them specifically to disassemble a body. Also, because he like he referred to that as the disassembly, the other three have to be doing something else, I guess. Yeah, like that's the whole thing with like, you know, if you carry a limp person, they're insanely heavy. Well, not insanely heavy, but like they're heavier than you would assume. Wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what they did, isn't it? This is Akira's body, isn't it? He's been here. That's that's what it is. His head is in the shack. The rest of his body is there. They've been cutting Akira apart. Uh, where's his body? That's it. They. Oh my god. Oh my god. I guess the alternate thing could be... Uh, no, it's because there's a head there. Like, the alternate thing could be, like, this is Akira, but... That wouldn't make sense. Uh, also, no, this couldn't be because his hair is that it's so dark. Like Akira's hair is light. It's light enough that like even if it was in shadow, it would look different than this. This clearly is not Akira's hair. All right, that's why she was so nauseous. And again, ah, oh, that's awful, especially since this time, like because it wasn't their first time, they were a bit more clinical about it. But also like they were willing to do things like, you know, snapping him by the joints because they're like, oh, it's a pain to cut him. Like, they dehumanized him like that. Oh my god, they they did something like that to Akira, of all people. Or not of all people, like, to one of their five, you know, one of their friends. Oh, that is awful. And again, now we have no idea who this could have been. Like, if there is a traitor in the group, that was Akira. So, it can't be, yeah. God damn. Because he was the one with the most suspicion on him. So, like, now that he's gone, we can't. We just can't. And this definitely explains why uh, Shin and Haruka don't go out. Or, you know, yeah, after this. Baki's lost it. Haruka's traumatized. Shin is vomiting. Again, Ryu, like, I was, at the very start, partially because I didn't fully remember Volume 1, but, like, Ryu really is the one, like, he's the most logical person here. He's really holding it together now. All right. I mean... Yeah, Tsubaki must really have some, like, complicated feelings towards, uh, towards Akira, considering that he was abusing her, but at the same time, like, they were deep friends. But, I mean, like, just from a, um, uh, like, a relationship thing, uh, Tsubaki and Ryu and then, um, Shintaro and Haruka wouldn't be too bad. That would work out, I suppose. You're so lazy you'd rather get buried in the snow than move? Are you trying to die? <laughs> this is such a good scene. Oh, is that why he was hanging... Like, I'm actually really curious. Was this because, like, did he get feverish because he was out in the cold? Or was he hanging out in the cold because he was feverish? Because I've done that before. Like, um, I've had, like, I've had a lot of headaches and a lot of, like, just fevers and stuff in general. And in the winter, I really do like just going out and, like, sitting down and just allowing the cold air to, like, cool me down. As opposed to, like, you know, using a fan or something. Something about it just being, like, you know, cold material is really nice. Or, like, 
if I'm on the bus, I'll like press my head to one of the one of the horribly dirty like germy will- windows, and just that uh, just the cold glass is so nice when you have a fever. Anyways, uh, just for now, I'll stay by your side. Aww. Also, I guess so. He did that completely like unintentionally, right? Maybe. Like the fact that he's so confused about it, or maybe he did it intentionally, but then like. He forgot about it, perhaps? Hmm. Yeah. So, that was Until Your Bones Rot, Volume 2. Akira's fucking dead. Uh, so Akira's dead. We have, um... The new detective... Something G? Fuji? Right. We got to see Haruka's sister. Like, the cast is expanding, but it's expanding very slowly, which I really like. I, I'm not a big fan of series with tons of characters because I can't memorize all of them. But so far, this has been a fantastic pace. And, like, the escalation of just horrible stuff happening has been gone along really well. Yeah, I don't have that much more to say about it. Just fantastic series so far. I'm really glad these volumes are so, like... I'm glad that there are so many chapters in them. Like, even if the chapters themselves aren't that aren't that long, if they're all, like, you know, ten pages or so, I, I do like how many of them there are. It feels like how many of them are, and then the fact that when you're in the midst of it, it doesn't feel like it's a bunch of chapters. It feels like just one ongoing story. It's a really nice mix of, like, it's segmented, but it doesn't feel super segmented. I think that's super cool. Anyways, that's Until Your Bones Rot, Volume 2. I'm still having a lot of fun with the series. It feels so weird to say, like, a series like this is fun, but it really is. Like, I'm enjoying myself with it. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be reading it. Even if it is about incredibly morbid stuff, and even if the series itself isn't, like, Fun, fun. Anyways, uh, bye for now. Yeah, yeah.